Captain T. Thank you. So Butch, since your dad is still wandering the halls of Mandalay Bay, I've got something for you. It's an inventor tip. Now this inventor tip was handed to your dad from one Justin Hoy in his first Autodesk University. And it was handed to him during his general session. And it was almost lost forever because one night at the Red Square, well, he decided to take the Motherland tour. Now it came back to him after running across Jay Tedeschi at the manufacturing lounge. Now, the way your dad saw it, this tip was your birthright, and before he went out drinking again the next day, he asked me to hide it. And the one place I could possibly hide a tip like that, up on this hard drive. So now, little man, boy, I give this tip to you. What is up? I am Rob Cohey, Industry Solution Evangelist, Autodesk Manufacturing, and yes, I'm bringing to you this Barry White voice because I just returned from Las Vegas and just getting my voice back. So let's get right into it. We're going to talk about a, a just a killer tip, a modeling technique that I've that has absolutely taken over how I lay out and create most of my models now. It's called multi-bodies. And essentially with multi-bodies, what you have is the ability to lay out an entire assembly in a single part and then extract each of those individual part files into an assembly when you're ready. So especially when you're just in the middle of a design mode, um, you know, you're not ready to create all those part files yet, this is a tremendous way of doing it. So what happens is in 2010 when you create your first extrusion, you're going to see this folder called bodies, solid bodies. Underneath of that, you're going to have either one or multiple bodies underneath of it. And, and I'll show you where you create multiple bodies. So here, as you can see, I just expanded it and I renamed what that's going to be. That's ultimately going to be the new part name once I go and extract this out. So what I need to do is once you extrude, obviously Inventor consumes that sketch. So you need to turn the visibility of it back on because what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude another profile that's hosted within that AutoCAD block that I've got in there. And the key there is to use new solid. Now if you don't use new solid here, it's not going to create multiple bodies. So therefore this tip wouldn't necessarily work, right? You need multi-bodies in order to do multi... See, we named it uh, something pretty, pretty catchy. Multi-bodies, multiple bodies. Right. Carry on, Rob. Alright, so I'll go in here and I'll rename that other uh, body to what I need it to be. This it happens to be another gasket, so I'll name it what it needs to be. Now, in addition to that, if I'm gonna do multiple bodies, I don't want it to be all this blah gray, so I need to actually change them the color as to what they're going to be. So I'll just go right click on the properties. Yeah, I like that jazz groove too. It really fits the voice. And then I'll change this over to what it needs to be. Black rubber. And now you're starting to see this thing kind of take shape a little bit. And the, and, and the best thing, in my mind, the single best thing about using multi-bodies is not only, you know, do I limit the amount of file management that I have to have, but also the positioning, the layout, the size, and everything is all based upon one single layout sketch. Or multiple if you wanted to. In this case, it happens to be a single layout sketch. But as I move these, uh, these sketch lines around, the position of those AutoCAD blocks are based upon that single sketch, so I have I have all kinds of control over potentially hundreds of components from one single sketch. So now once you're ready to extract those part files out from that multi-body, what you do is you just place that multi-body part inside of an assembly. And then I'll double click on the part to edit it, and I'll go over into my Manage tab here. And on the Manage tab, you're going to see Make Part and Make Components. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Make Components, and what that's going to do is, is say, well, where's your body? So I'll go ahead and select the bodies. I'll do a Shift Select, select the first one, hold down Shift, select the last one, if I want to create all of them. And in this case, I certainly do. And I'll insert the components into the target assembly. And then once I hit Next here, it's going to ask me, all right, well, what do you want to name these files? Notice that it picked up the default body name for the file, what template file do you want to use, what build material structures it's going to be in, do you want to change where the file is going to be saved. So I haven't had to create any more than one file at this particular junction. I, and again, what I think is one of the most enhancing things about multibodies is, is it's uh, what it does for you in terms of file management. It really um, doesn't force you to create all those files until you're ready. 
Now the last thing I'm going to do, if this is going to be a production part, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to edit the layout parts, build material structure, and just make that a reference part. You can make it a phantom part, whatever you want. So it doesn't show up in the build material. So if I go into build material of the assembly, as you can see now, it's now a reference part. So I'm going to continue grooving on here with my Barry White voice. I hope you dig it. Don't forget to follow me on the manufacturing community at manufacturingcommunity at autodesk.com. Check out my tweets. Hopefully you guys are following me at AU during the tweets. We had a little 12-second video stuff going on there. So that's Multibodies, and I'll catch you on the flip side.